The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, June 6, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Hello and welcome. I'm in uh, lovely San Francisco today as we talk. Today, Jim will answer the question, if we will get a liquidity squeeze. Jim, now that the debt deal has been struck, as much as a trillion dollars of new treasury issuance is coming in the next few months, can funds be outside the financial system? The answer is yes. And this is a very important issue or concept to understand when we talk about a liquidity squeeze. Um, so if we go to the next chart, what we need to understand is the financial system revolves around the banking system. When money is in the banking system and it moves around, it doesn't have any net effect on liquidity. When your employer pays you, your money goes from your employer's bank account to your bank account. As far as the banking system is concerned, nothing has changed. Then you use your money and you pay your rent. It goes from your bank account to your landlord's bank account. In the banking system, nothing has changed. You buy groceries, it goes to the grocer's bank account, nothing has changed. But if money can leave the banking system or enter the banking system, or excuse me, the financial system or enter the financial system, it can have an effect. Is there money that can leave or enter the financial system? Yes, the government. The government is not part of the financial system. So the first chart I show you here is debt, is the total amount of debt that the government has raised. It's $31.4 trillion. And the blue line is the debt ceiling, which was raised on Saturday. So this chart will start going up in the next couple of days over the next couple of years. As the government gets more and more debt, that is pulling money out of the financial system. As the government pays down its debt, it's pushing money back into the financial system. Um, so if we go to the next chart, the other version of pulling money out of the financial system is the Fed. The Fed's balance sheet, which we all focused on, as it, and this is the balance sheet at 8.39 trillion, as it rises, they're taking money out of the financial system and putting it in the Fed's account. That is pulling money out of the financial system. That is a drain of liquidity. When the balance sheet goes down, they're pushing money back into the financial system, all things being equal. That could be a net add uh, of liquidity, although it gets a little bit more complicated with the Fed's balance sheet. Concept I wanna leave you with here is there is a set of money that is uh, outside of the financial system. And that is usually the Fed and that is usually the government and they can drain money or they can add money to the financial system. And Jim, what is the size of the drain? Right. So if we go to the next chart, let's talk about what the gov because this is not about the Fed. This is about the government. And we're talking about the government now has been, um, has increased the debt ceiling. And what does that mean? So this is the TGA, the, general, the Treasury General Account or the Treasury's cash balance. Think of this as the Treasury's checking account, how much money they have in it. And I've got three boxes on this chart the orange box, the red box, and the green box. And these are the last three times we've hit the debt ceiling and then we increased it. And in all three of those instances, what you saw was you saw that there was a giant surge in the amount of money in the Treasury's general account. How does that work? They couldn't issue net new bills. What I mean by net is if a $10 billion Treasury bill comes due, and they issue another $10 billion treasury bill to pay it, there's no net new money. They could do that, but they can't issue 10.1 or 11 to use the other billion dollars to fund the government. So there was, so during the debt ceiling limit, the amount of money cash balances by held by the treasury falls. That is pushing money into the financial system. That is net adding liquidity 
which is why a lot of people have argued why the stock market and financial markets performed so well during the debt ceiling crisis, because you were adding liquidity, because you could see that chart go went from uh, about a trillion dollars in March of 22 down to $23 billion, so call it $970 billion, was shoved into the system, because that was money outside the financial system. When it gets paid down, it doesn't disappear. The government pays their workers, they pay benefits, they pay the light bills of all the government buildings. That goes back into the banking system. That is an add of liquidity. When it rises, it's a, it's a drain on liquidity. In the orange box, in uh, August of 2019, we, uh, we expanded the debt ceiling and it went from 100 billion to 400 billion in a couple of weeks, a $300 billion rise. By mid-September, six weeks later, we had the repo crisis. The repo market hit 9% yields. It had a liquidity squeeze. The Fed had to start buying $60 billion worth of treasury bills a month. But remember, they famously called it not QE, and we all made fun of it, calling it the not QE QE, because they were expanding their balance sheet, but they were arguing it was bills and it didn't count, but it did. During the financial crisis, or during the COVID, excuse me, you could see that the, the, we passed the CARES Act and we passed a bunch of, uh, of relief bills and the government surged the amount of issuance and the amount of money that went into their account. Remember, when you buy a treasury bill, you're, you're paying for it. It goes into the treasury's general account. It's money that leaves the, the financial system. Well, it surged from March through July of 2020 by something like $1.4 trillion, a number that we've never seen before. And during that period, the financial markets were dysfunctional. They were moving four or 5% a day. The, the Nick Timoros, the Wall Street Journal Fed reporter wrote a whole book about how dysfunctional the treasury market was during that period and what the, and that the, uh, the, federal, the Fed and the Open Market Committee was working almost around the clock to try and solve some of the problems. The last time, we had the uh, debt ceiling was in December of, of 2021. We ran down the TGA, down the $41 billion, markets boomed, and then we, we saw a $700 billion surge of, of borrowing after we lifted the debt ceiling in December of 21 into the end of 22. That kicked off the 25% correction in the stock market and the worst total return bear market and bonds in history. And then, of course, the Fed started raising rates to add to it, so it wasn't that alone. But during that period, the markets really struggled. So when you see a rise of money to that extent, then you could say, or the TGA go up that much, it's pulling money out. It's draining money out of the financial system. How much is the TGA got to go up? Well, they argue that they need to get around 600 billion or so. That's the treasury arguing that they gotta go from 23 billion to 600 billion in order to get back to normal. If we go to the next chart, there's also a bunch of extraordinary measures that they, are, that they used. And this is the list of extraordinary measures right off of the treasury's website. What are they? When they run out of money in, on the debt ceiling, there is government pension funds and there's other uh, escrow or, or trust accounts that the government has that they can borrow against those accounts. 337 billion is the number says in the totals authorized measures of which they used 304 billion. And I, I like to joke and it's just remind everybody, if you run a private corporation, you can't borrow against your government, against your employees, um, you know, 401ks or their IRA accounts or their homes uh, as well, you go to jail. But the government could do this stuff all the time too, without a problem. So there's, they have to pay back the $304 billion of extraordinary measures. They've got to get to about five or $600 billion to get the TGA account from 23 billion to 500, but that's like $900 billion of, of pulling money out of the financial system. And when they get to that, that 900 billion, they're probably gonna need a little bit more on top of that, which is why everybody's saying that they're going to drain a trillion dollars out of the financial system. So Jim, what can offset this? Yeah, so if we go to the next chart, the next chart is the uh, Fed's reverse repo facility. Now, this, now I'll, I'll look real quick, what this is, is if you are a money market fund and you are an approved counterparty of the Fed, you can take your money, the funds that you get from your money market fund, 
place it at the Fed on an overnight repo. It's called reverse repo from the Fed facility, repo for you. And you'll get 20 basis points less the top end of the funds rate. The funds rate is currently five to five and a quarter. So you get a 5.05% yield. There is $2.1 trillion in this account um, at the Fed. This is money that is out of the financial system. It is left, it is sitting at the Fed. Remember, why is it important to say it's out of the financial system? Banks can't borrow against it. They can't lend against it. They can't write loans against it. They can't use it for collateral. It's sitting at the Fed. It earns an interest rate. It's a legitimate investment, but it is not part of a fractional banking system. There's $2.1 trillion in this. In 2019 and in 2020 and in early 2021, I don't show these on the chart, there was two or three billion dollars in this. Now there's two trillion. There's 1,000 times more money in this. So if as we get this 900 billion to $1 billion surge of, of borrowing by the Fed and the TGA or borrowing by the Treasury and the TGA, their, their general account surges by 900 billion and the reverse repo facility falls from 2 trillion to 1 trillion, then it's just money outside the financial system went to a different account outside the financial system, no effect, no effect at all. If it stays at $2 trillion and we raise another 900 billion, that's money that comes, that's been sucked out of the financial system. It's come out of banks, it's come out of deposits, and that could lead to further squeezing of liquidity within the financial system. So the question is, will it come out of reverse repo? And that gets me to my final chart. The bottom panel on this chart is the same thing I just showed you before. The black line is the reverse repo rate, which is now 505. And the red line and the green line are one and three month treasury bills. And I'll, I'll sum it up for you. There is no relationship between the yield on treasury bills and the reverse repo rate to predict where the amount of reverse repo in the bottom panel will go. So I know a lot of people on Wall Street are saying, well, of course the money's gonna come out because the rates on T-bills is above 5.05, so it's a better deal. So money funds won't put their money in the reverse repo at the Fed at 5.05, they'll buy a, a T-bill that's yielding 5.2 or 5.25. That's always been the case. If you look, the green line for the three month bill is usually always higher than it. There's been the case many times with the red line, yet we don't see the reverse repo respond to the difference in these yields. It is a very complicated thing, the reverse repo, and why money funds use it and don't use it. One of the reasons they use it is it's easy. Anybody could call, once you're approved in your money fund manager, you could call the Fed, and you could place a trillion dollars, or not quite a trillion, you could place hundreds of trillions of dollars with the Fed at a 5.05 yield in two minutes every, every day. It's a safe, your counterparty is the New York Fed. You cannot get yourself in trouble. It won't default like we were worried about with the treasury bill, although that's off the table now till 2025. So there's a lot of dynamics that's, uh, that are really hard to understand as to whether or not people will actually, or money funds will pull money out of reverse repo and put it in the bills. So bottom line is there's gonna be a giant surge in the TGA. If it comes out of the reverse repo, it's money out of the financial system going to a different account. There's no liquidity squeeze. If the, T, if the reverse repo facility stays where it is and there's a surge in the TGA, that means we're pulling more money out of the financial system. More reserves are leaving, more deposits are leaving, and the banking system is already struggling to begin with, and this won't be a good situation. Do we know what's gonna happen? No, we don't only because it's so hard to predict the reverse repo. So we'll just watch this number that's reported midday every day. If you have a Bloomberg, it's T-O-M-O-T-O-T-L, index key, and you could see this every day. And if we see it starting to fall, that's a good sign. That means that there will be less of a liquidity problem. If it holds steady, as in the coming days and weeks, there's a giant surge of issuance and money gets piling into the TGA account, then we might, then where did that money come from? It came out of the banking system. That's less money for the banking system to hand out loans, collateralize, um, and, uh, you know, and maybe even fewer deposits, and that could lead to a problem down the road. 
Jim, thank you for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.